Hey, Kermit Weeks here, Fantasy of Flight, and I'm thinking about to go do a Kermit cam in the TP40N here, so why don't you come along, we'll go check it out. Uh, basically, this airplane I acquired in the Tall Mance collection. I uh, bought the whole collection of 36 airplanes back in 1985, and uh, this airplane was used in uh, a couple of movies. It was used in Tora Tora Tora. It was always also used in a... Uh, a great film called Death Race uh, had Lloyd Bridges in it. It was about he was a tank commander, I think, and uh, a couple other people in there: uh, Roy Thines and uh, Eric Braden. And anyway, this is the only, to my knowledge, dual control factory built during the World War II era P-40 on the planet. It's a TP. T stands for trainer version. Uh, it's got a full set of controls in the back. Uh, of course, it replaced uh, normally the single seat version has the fuel tank there, but we got a drop tank that hangs on the little bomb shackle at the bottom there uh, if we want to go any long distances. But basically, uh, the only thing that uh, you don't have back here, I think, is flaps and landing gear. Uh, there was an instructor mirror that actually bolted up to here. We've got one. We found one. Somebody thought it was a like a truck mirror and uh, oh my god we ended up with it the problem is when i fly with it it puts a bit bad buffet on the tail so you know we took a couple of pictures with it but it's just not very pleasant to fly with so anyway um it's a great airplane if you get a chance get that uh death race movie uh they filmed that i think up in mojave they had minimum actors there was probably a very very low budget film because they were all in LA. They just flew the airplane up there, landed in the desert. And it was basically a, a tank Panzer commander chasing uh, a P-40 pilot around that had a coolant leak, and he couldn't fly very far, and then the tank would follow him. And anyway, you can imagine what happens in the end. So anyway, so we're going to start, uh, you know, basically here, and, uh, you know, just kind of check everything. P-40 has a uh, propensity to uh, have... crack stacks on these kind of butterfly ones so we always tap those and, and you get a thud if it doesn't really uh, you know if it's not very strong uh, external power thing if you wanted to plug in an APU there this is the the landing gear indicator for the left gear I'm just looking here make sure all the lines everything's okay no leaks Tires look pretty good, uh, nothing unusual. Of course, on the P-40, the lanyard goes back and basically rotates 90 degrees to go up. Uh, they generally take a significant amount of time. If you actually look on the belly here, there's uh, some sway braces go on here, and there's uh, this is where we actually hang. I've got a 75-gallon drop tank that clips to this. You could also take a bomb shackle. You know, hang a bomb there as well, but the sway braces go there. And if I go any kind of a cross country, we put the drop tank on. This also could carry bombs out here. It's got some interesting little sway braces that we haven't uh, got on there because we haven't really put a bomb on there. But basically, you could put up to a, probably a 500 pound bomb on there. And that what slides in here, actually, believe it or not, is like freaking pieces of plywood. That's your actual sway brace so when they drop them the plywood just flies away of course it's got six uh, 50 caliber machine guns three on each side looking for you know dings and leading edges i already took the pedo cover off we always cover it up here in florida to keep the mud daubers from making nests in them uh p40 obviously was a much earlier de development than the mustang and p47s and corsairs later the ailerons are fabric in fact all the controls are fabric um, this has a, it doesn't have a boost tab on it, it's just strictly a, a trim tab for trimming out the, uh, the lateral deal and it's actually electric. Uh, flaps are just drooped slightly because the hydraulic pressure off. This is the flap indicator. There's like three different colors, green, yellow, and red, I think. And when I get in the cockpit, I'll show you how it works because it's got a, a hand pump system plus a, uh, uh, you know, uh, high, uh, electrical hydraulic pump that uh, operates it. Um, this is the back here, check the battery and all that kind of stuff. We'll check the rear cockpit out a little bit later. Checking the tail wheel. You know, all back here just looking for dings and scratches. Fabric. 
there. That looks pretty good. And same with the rudder. And again, the trim tab is strictly, uh, it's not a boost or an anti servo tab. Same thing here on the, on the elevator. It's just strictly a trim tab. Uh, the TP40N or the N models were slightly longer than the early versions, like the E. Uh, of course, uh, it has the Allison engine. It was an American design, and uh, it was this was really one of the mainstay airplanes at the beginning of the war. And the British Purchasing Commission came over and they said, "Build us everything you can get." Uh, on the side we got the flap thing on the other side to the indicator. Aterons, again, fabric covered. See the bomb shackle up there. Just looking around for dings and everything's looking pretty good. We got all the guns in here too, but it's a real pain to get under there and pop all these little things off there. But basically, you know, we've got fake machine guns in there and uh, there might be some dummy ammo as well. Um, same thing here, just looking for leaks, lines. Everything looks good. Um, the cow flaps actually are manual. You actually, there's a big lever uh, in the cockpit that runs these up and down. Your pilot just basically watches the, the, the temps. Of course, this chin scoop here, which the P40 is famous for, is uh, holds, that's the oil radiator, the middle bottom one, and then the two coolant radiators. Okay, and interesting. And uh, this has a Curtis electric prop on it, three bladed prop. Spinner looks good. I'll explain the Curtis electric prop. Uh, instead of using hydraulic pressure basically to adjust the pitch angle of the blades, it uses an electric motor in here. And uh, it's kind of interesting because you can actually move the propeller on the ground because it's just an electric motor. And there's a governor in there that basically. Uh, you know, allows you to adjust the RPM that you want. Okay, so everything looks good on the outside. I've already sumped it. It's full of fuel. Uh, all the fluids are up and checked. I want to show you something in the back here. It's a little bit hard for me to get in, but we'll see here. Okay, it's another warm day here in Florida. This is really cool. We hosted an AVG reunion here one time. I just want to make sure the seat belts are all tied up, which I did earlier. You want to make sure that there's no way you could jam those controls, so that's good. But anyway, I got a chance. We did an AVG reunion here at Fantasy of Flight, and I got a chance to take five of the original Flying Tigers up, the original ones. I got them all to sign the seat. It says, may the spirit of the AVG Flying Tigers be with whomever flies in this seat. We got Bob Lair. Peter Wright, Charlie Bond, Dick Rossi, and the highest time P-40 Flying Tiger ace of all time, 16 kills Tex Hill. He was a really great friend of mine. Just kind of take a quick look at the cockpit back here. It's got a full panel, full controls. It's got trim, throttle. Like I said, it just doesn't have the landing gear or the... Uh, the uh, the flaps and then in the back here you can see the battery kind of looking in the back of the hydraulic tank and stuff you know so anyway so we're going to go ahead and just close this make sure it's closed that's good okay and then uh, we've got uh, cockpit here of course you can see all the way through back there um, let me throw a helmet up here And of course the parachute is the cushion. Get in on first. We got one for the chest, two crotch straps. That's the parachute. All the World War II airplanes, they got bucket seats pretty much. Okay, so that's the parachute. I'm gonna put on the Seat belt, shoulder harness is over first, and we tighten the lap belt first. So that's the right shoulder harness, the left one, and then the left lap belt connects in like so. 
Okay, I want to get out, you go like that. That's latching it. Always tighten down the lap belt first. That's nice and snug. And we do the shoulder harnesses. And the shoulder harnesses, basically, they, uh, they're they locked right now. I can't move forward. But over here on the left of the seat, there's a little lever right there. And if I push that back, now I can, I can lean forward. You can hear the springs there. So go ahead and lock that. Okay. All right, now why is it not locking? Oh, there we go. I didn't pull it hard enough. Okay, so that's locked. Always zero the altimeter in case I'm flying around here locally. I know where the ground is. Okay, so in the P40, um, here's the flap handle. That's down, that's neutral, that's up. And uh, there's a lever over here that you can actually hand pump, okay? Uh, if you're on the ground or you got an emergency. And so to put the flaps down, I put that in that down position. And as I pump this handle, okay, over here, you can look and see the only flap indicator is out there on the wing. And the first, the green part is 15 degrees. The yellow part is 30. And then the red part goes down to full flap, which is 45 degrees. And then it'll get hard here. There we go, so I can't pump it anymore. So that means they're down in lock, so I could go back to neutral on the flaps when I'm flying. We'll go ahead and pump this up. Pump that. You see the gauge out there. And that's hard, so I can go back to neutral. And of course, here's the landing gear. You have to knock this little latch out of here to be able to move it up or down. Uh, well, to go down, you can push it down, but to go up, you actually have to push that lever. So on takeoff, I grab it like this and I actually hit my thumb like that to move that little lever and then I pull the handle up kind of backhanded is the only way I can do it. And uh, when the airplane's flying it's got a it's got a uh, uh, an engine driven hydraulic pump and it basically uh, is electrically operated. And there's a little switch here on the stick right there with your pinky. Okay now watch this I'll turn on the battery. Okay now if I want to put the flaps if I pull this you'll hear the the pump go. Okay, so when I'm flying and I, and I want the flaps to go down, push the gear handle or the flap handle down, I'll pull this little trigger. Now watch the flaps. When you hear it squeal like that, you know it's up or it's, it's at the full extension. So I got the flap handle up. Here we go, trigger. Okay, that's how the flaps work. Um, and then the gear is the same way. So there's no pressure on the hydraulic system while you're flying unless you're actually cycling it. And uh, of course it takes a long time for the gear to come up because it comes back, rotates 90 degrees. I mean, some of the P40s, when you watch them take off, you wonder if it's ever gonna go up. Okay, so quick little cockpit check here. Flap handle's in neutral. This is the, the tank release. There's a belly tank if we need it, but that's how you would release it if you had to. Um, and, uh, Got the elevator trim here, and we usually set it for takeoff, which is one degree nose up. There's zero, that's neutral. Takeoff, TO there. Okay, here's the rudder. I usually leave it about one degree nose right, and it hardly ever changes. It's uh, the P51, you're always adjusting the rudder trim on the P40. It's not a big deal. Um, so basically, we got plenty of fuel. I fueled it the other day, and uh, just taxi it around a little bit is all. This over here is the uh, for the cow flaps, okay? So you pull this little, it's like a big tractor deal. You pull that thing with my thumb, and then I can adjust this. And there's little serrated notches in there, and I can leave it, and it'll lock, you know, so the air doesn't blow it back. And basically, you know, you uh, take off, you land with the cow flaps wide open, and not only do you, in the chin scoop there, you got the, the oil cooler that's down at the bottom, but then you got the two big radiators that are uh, you know up in the on the side there and uh, and what you do is once you take off you basically just uh, cruise around a little bit you know you kind of let the temp settle in and you pretty much just let this thing go to trail wherever it feels good maybe close it one notch then you just leave it there and then you watch the temp so I've got the coolant temp here 
the oil temp is here, and I just watch those two. You can't adjust them. It's a, you just got to kind of take a range that makes them both happy. Um, basically, uh, that's the airspeed right there. There's your airspeed. That's a rate of climb. We've got a clock. That's our altimeter. Like I said, we'll just zero it here for, for uh, flying around locally so I know where the ground is. Uh, turn and slip indicator. Compass. Uh, there's a gyro compass. Manifold pressure. This will say how much power the engine's using. We use uh, 52 inches on takeoff and 3,000 RPM. So when I bring the throttle back after takeoff, uh, this will drop. Okay, the RPM will stay the same because it's got a governor. And then as I slowly bring the propeller back, uh, it'll, the governor will slowly bring the thing back there. Now on the P40, it's got this Curtis electric prop. And so if I've got the battery and the generator on, the electric prop switch is right here. And actually what you can do is right now it's in automatic with up. And if you flick this down, you basically now have a fixed pitch prop. Wherever the prop was previously set, that's exactly where it's going to stay. And if you want, you can manually increase it or you can manually decrease it, okay? So that's in automatic. Um, if you were going on a cross country and you didn't want to, you know, for some reason had a problem or something uh, and you were all set up for cruise, you could turn that off and basically you'd have a fixed pitch prop. And as you increased, and decrease the throttle, the RPM would increase and decrease, you know, like, like I said, on a fixed pitch prop. So that's in automatic. And, but if we want right now, if I, you can actually listen to the motor up there. If I decrease this and flick this over here, uh, because right now it's in low pitch, so it's in high RPM, you can listen to it. You can actually hear the motor. I don't know if you can see it, but you can actually see the blades turning. Okay, see the blades turning up there? Okay, now I'm going to flick it back to increase. So I'm manually increasing it. Okay, and we'll flip it back to automatic because that's pretty much where we fly. And then we just use the governor uh, propeller level here to uh, set the RPM. Um, that's your uh, manifold pressure, so that's the the deal, and of course, right now we're basically 29 and a quarter inches of manifold pressure is uh, what the ambient uh, temp is right now. And uh, when we start up, this will go down to about 15 inches. And as we add power, when we do the run up, we you're supposed to use 30 inches of manifold pressure, but in this airplane, it's kind of tail light. And I've found that if I don't have somebody in the back seat, the tail will come up. So uh, the last thing I want to do is pay for a prop that hits the ground. So anyway, so that's that. Um, we'll use probably 27 inches or something to check the mags. We got our triple pressure gauge here, so we got our oil temp, we got our oil pressure, we got our fuel pressure. And if I turn on the fuel pump uh, right here, you'll see the pressure go up. And you can hear it as well, okay? Uh, coolant temp up top, uh, a suction gauge for the uh, gyro instruments, and carburetor air temp. And the carburetor air temp is controlled over here. Right here, this is on cold. So it's actually down. If I wanted to go to carb air hot, I got to push that in and it goes to the middle setting. So now it's on hot in case you were flying through some rain or clouds or something like that. And if you want filtered air, if you were flying in the desert, it would go up there. So then, then the air would actually come in through some filters. But in Florida here, we pretty much fly with it cold and that gives you your maximum power. Um, this is uh, the primer. And the P-40 was kind of an early uh, airplane, so it actually it just has a manual primer. It takes about a squirt and a half to do that, and then it locks. So you want to make sure that's locked. This is the canopy uh, latch here. So if I want to close the canopy, I uh, either way, anyway, that flips there. That actually allows that to lock into these little holes right here, this little pin. So I can pull it in and close the canopy like that, or I can open it like that and of course when we get out of the airplane you want to make sure you put it like that because if you move the canopy see you inadvertently don't want that little pin to stick in the hole otherwise it is a very tedious job to get the canopy open when nobody's inside the airplane.